Hello. In this video, we're going to calculate the partition function for a harmonic oscillator again. This time, however, we will do it properly and we will use what we know about such systems from quantum mechanics instead of treating the oscillator classically. Once again, we will consider a system that is only free to move along one position coordinate. The classical Hamiltonian for any such system has a form like this. When we go from classical mechanics to quantum mechanics, our Hamiltonians become operators. To indicate that the Hamiltonian is now an operator, we thus put a little hat over the H like this. Our harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian operator in quantum mechanics is thus given by the expression shown here. We're not going to dwell on the business of solving the Schrodinger equation with this operator in this video as we are studying statistical mechanics. The business of diagonalizing the Hamiltonian to obtain eigenvalues and eigenvectors is best left to a course in quantum mechanics. What we need to understand here are the implications of the change from a classical description of the system to a quantum description. These implications are illustrated in the diagram shown here. In quantum mechanics, the system is no longer allowed to take any value of the energy. Instead, the system is confined to be in one of an infinite number of equally spaced energy levels. These energy levels are given by the expression shown at the bottom of the slide, where n can equal 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. h bar is Planck's constant over 2 pi, and omega is related to k by the expression shown here. To calculate a partition function from this expression for the energy levels, we have to evaluate a sum and not an integral. The particular sum we need to compute is the following. We can immediately see that we can rearrange this expression by using the laws of exponential and by taking terms that do not depend on n outside of the sum. When we do this, we find the expression that is shown here. We ne next note that the resulting sum that remains is nothing more than a geometric series. We can thus write the following expression for the partition function. Easy. Let's now consider the average energy for this quantum harmonic oscillator. Inserting the expression that we just derived into the derivative on the slide gives us the following. The differentiation here is not as straightforward as the differentiation we had to complete in the classical case. Even so, it is never less straightforward to arrive at the following expression for the average energy. It is useful to plot the expression for the average energy that we have just derived in order to understand this result better. A plot of this function is thus shown below. You can see that when the temperature is large, the average energy increases linearly as we saw in the classical case. There is a deviation from this linear increase at low temperatures though. Now that we have drawn the graph and know what to expect, we can go about trying to manipulate the expression for the average energy in order to understand the limiting behaviour of this system at high and low temperature. Let's start by considering what happens when the temperature is small. To consider these low temperatures, we will take the limit as beta, the inverse temperature, tends to infinity. In this limit, the e to the minus beta h bar omega terms in this second quotient go to zero. The average energy thus reduces to h bar omega over 2. This result makes physical sense as the energy of the ground state for the harmonic oscillator is h bar omega over 2. What this limit is telling us, therefore, is that at low temperature the system is almost certainly in the lowest energy state, as we would expect. Let's now consider the other extreme. The limit as beta, the inverse temperature, tends to zero. In other words, the limit as the temperature tends to infinity. 
In writing the limit here, I have brought the two partial fractions in the expression for the average energy at the top of the slide over a common denominator. To make progress, I then note that because beta is small, I can replace the exponential terms with the Maclaurin expansion of the exponential, which is shown here to first order. Replacing the exponentials in the numerator and the denominator in this way brings us to the following result. In the limit as beta tends to zero, the second term in the numerator is zero. Notice next that we can cancel factors of 2 h bar omega from the numerator and denominator. We thus arrive at the expected result in the high temperature limit. The average energy is 1 over beta, i.e. kBT. In other words, even though we have a quantum mechanical description of our system, the average energy takes a value that accords with the predictions of classical equipartition if the temperature is high enough. We can see a similar result if we look at the heat capacity rather than the average energy. We can arrive at an expression for the heat capacity by taking the first derivative of the expression for the average energy that we plotted on the previous slide. The maths here is quite arduous, so I will simply plot the resulting expression, which looks like this. What you see here is that at high temperatures, the heat capacity is constant, just as it was when we studied this system classically. At low temperatures, however, quantum mechanics takes over and you see deviations from the behavior that is predicted from classical equipartition. That is almost all there is to say. Just one final thing to note. If we have n quantum harmonic oscillators, then the Hamiltonian will be a sum, and the partition function can be written as a product of integrals or sums as always. The, av the average energy and heat capacities in these cases will also become sums. If we have n um, quantum harmonic oscillators at high temperatures, we therefore again recover the result for such a system from classical equipartition. Thank you for your attention.